Every three years, the world's toughest offshore challenge is on, the Volvo Ocean Race. It is the contest that all professional sailors dream of doing. For the 12th edition, seven teams are crossing four oceans and five continents over nine months. It is the ultimate endurance test. It's just relentless. What is different from previous editions is that this time the fleet is composed of identical boats, the Volvo Ocean 65, which means that the race will be won by the best sailing crew. Fantastic, we're on, we're on top of the world. Um, no, no. So proud of my team. They are sailing 24-7, fighting Mother Nature, trying to win one of the hardest races on the planet. This is their story. After nearly three weeks at sea, the Volvo Ocean Race fleet is getting into the last stage of its second leg. It's been an emotional ride. Losing a team was tough for everybody. Just concerned that they're all OK. I mean, hitting something at 15 knots, um, you know, normally can be quite a lot of damage. Obviously, it is to the boat, but also to people. But the race is on, and the six remaining teams are now battling for podium places. Once more, it's all down to the navigation. Negotiating the Gulf is key to getting the best approach onto the Strait of Hormuz. Arriving in Abu Dhabi in top position is very important for Adil, as it is his home turf. Last time it was a great experience for me. I got chosen from 120 to represent the UAE and represent the Abu Dhabi, and it was a great experience to sail around the world, to be the first Arab ever to sail on the Volvo race and to come back, it's a dream coming through. Dill's sort of been dropping his local bomb, knowledge bombs on us, uh, trying to help us a little bit here and there. Uh, but we might have a little chance to, to catch up a little bit more here, so it runs pretty positive. Adol, what do you think? We think we're gonna come back in the race, and we're gonna be leading soon, and uh, looking forward to arrive to Madabi in there. First place and make it look proud and our fans and our people in Abu Dhabi. He's optimistic. <laughs> Unfortunately, the constant change of wind is not making it easy for Ian's crew. We're in pretty good space in top three, which is which is always our aim. Um, lost the lead nearly a week ago now, so not exactly a new feeling. Um, Right now we're catching back up with the guys ahead, closing down on them, so you know, at the moment we're in, we're in pretty good spirits. Sailing always frustrating. Sailing was born to frustrate us. But, um, you know, I think um, it's going to be frustrating for everybody in the next three days because it's going to be very lightweight and shifty, um, lots of local effects, so um, you know, there's going to be plenty of frustrations for sure in the coming days. We're three hours behind the leaders. You know, it's really not that big a deficit at this stage. But uh, having said that, you know, we've only got 500 miles to run, so we've got to start to close them down sooner or later. We're going to need a bit of help. We're not going to just do that through little bits of here and there. We're going to need them to slow up at some point. Um, but sometimes it pays to be behind. You know, if you're in front, you've got to make the decisions first, and everybody else gets to see what's happened to you, and they can react to it. So uh, for sure, all is not lost. At the front of the fleet on board Brunel, the light winds may be frustrating for the crew, but it also provides them with a good opportunity to rest, for some of them at least. Yo guys, just take a look. Take a look at these wild sailors in their natural habitat. They're all sleeping there, doing their thing. Just take a look. Beautiful colors. Wow. And you just take a look at this beast. Yep, that must be the alpha male. I have no doubt about it. Do you feel that smell? The 
These animals, they're a bit smelly. They probably haven't taken a shower for a while. This is how they bond. This is how they act. Oh, you should, you, sh you should smell it. It's a real big mystery why they sleep in the bow of the boat when it's 45 degrees of Celsius outside and inside the boat. Experts believe that it might be because they want to keep the bow of the boat down in the water. That might be the reason. That might be they think. Or it's just more cozy inside like this. They look really cozy, isn't it? And as with all great species, there are a few things that need to remain a mystery. Meanwhile, a few hundred miles at the back of the fleet, Team SCA are enjoying a gift from Mother Nature. We saw amazing school session. I think it was dolphin training school. And there were some big ones showing lots of really little ones. The best form in which to exit the wave and enter the wave. They were obviously being told about this is a sailing boat with a keel. And you can play around the bow of these boats. I've never seen so many all together. It was quite a display. To me, dolphins mean everything's going to be OK. So for me, I think now the wind's going to fill in and we're going to get going and it's all going to be good. And it seems that Team Alvi Medica are blessed with a similar visit. Just seeing a very big fleet of dolphins, every time it's a pleasure to see this kind of fish. Now we have uh, the Gulf of Oman and the Strait, that probably is the trickiest part of, the, of this trip. We still have a lot to do to, for the race. I mean, we're far behind the leaders and we have to fight to keep our keep our place with the Spanish and the girls and try to catch up if we have an opportunity until, until then, so still a lot, a lot of work to do. To keep morale up, Navigator Will has challenged his younger crew to spot the Amman shore before he does. I'm looking for land. Apparently it's 30 miles down that way. Oman. OK, boys, you do realise that Oman is down here. And you can see it clear as day. <laughs> Land ho! And, uh, Disney? What? I got an air one. Oh, that's a bad evening. It's a bad <laughs> evening coming. How did you not see it, Dave? It's alright. When you get to my age, your eyes improve, I think. <laughs> You're lying. What's that? Brian. What's oh, that? That's a big cloud. Big cloud. <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh, you were looking for it. My eyes. Oh. These young guys. I know, I don't understand. Only time we can get one up on Will. And we didn't get it. I feel like we've lost one there. We've only got seven more now. So. That's another demerit point on the Watchmaster. Yeah. Very disappointed. On the Volvo 65 we have six different front sails and we have one main source, so seven sails in total. Three of those front sails are called jibs, um, a J1, J2, J3, and as the number goes up, the size of the sail gets smaller. So this sail here just doesn't have much wind in it, unfortunately, at the moment, is a J1. And um, we put this up in the lightest wind when we're trying to go quite close to the wind. So upwind or maybe reaching. Downwind or for when we're reaching with the wind quite far behind us, we have three big sails. The biggest one on the whole boat is called the A3 and it's 420 square meters. That's sort of like two and a half volleyball courts. It's a pretty big sail. It's a really big sort of full sail and it attaches to the very front of the boat on the bowsprit, to the very top of the mast. And the, the uh, third corner of it goes all the way to the back of the boat. 
There's another sail that does that as well. That's called the Masthead Zero. And that's also really big, but it's a bit flatter than the A3. So we can use that for going upwind as well. And there's also a fractional zero called the Fro, has a nickname. <laughs> and um, that attaches also to the front, but it goes to a slightly shorter point up the rig and uh, also attaches somewhere near the back. So three big sails. And when we put those up, we're generally going quite fast. So they're my favorite. And the main sail is sort of like the engine on the boat. It's basically driving the boat. It often controls the amount of heel on the boat. And uh, it's helping the balance of the boat. If you only had sails up on the front, it would be very hard to go in a straight line. Now, most racing boats are made of sails like this, which is more like what the boat's made of. It's made of carbon, and it's not actually stitched together at all. It's, it's laid up in a mold um, and sort of heated. So it's actually much more like a piece of carbon than it is cloth, and it's, it's quite stiff, it's quite firm. And the good thing about that is it's very durable. As the night falls, the incredible surroundings are lighting up Team Alvi Medica's journey. So it's a pretty cool night out here. Uh, we got a lot of bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is the light produced by living organisms. Anything that moves pretty much lights up. So flying fish are going nuts. We just saw a pot of dolphins came by. Uh, anytime we look at the foils or anything like that, you're looking at jet stream coming out the back. It's been nearly a month since the fleet left Cape Town for the second leg of the Volvo Ocean Race. Leg two is a tough one, as it's never been sailed before, and having a fleet solely composed of a one-designed boat is pushing the teams to their limits. As the fleet leaders are getting ready to round the tip of Oman, it becomes apparent that the battle for first place is between Dong Feng and Brunel. So with only a few days sailing left before the finish line in Abu Dhabi, Dong Feng race team are straining every muscle to try and bridge the gap to the leader's team Brunel. One, two, go! Brunel! We're getting close, 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 and then overtaking him. Out. Right? For the next 10 hours, we will have some wind, and after uh, the wind will decrease, so it's going to be very tricky. The weather forecasts are very bad in this uh, area, so yes, we are a bit afraid, but it's also the opportunity to come back uh, on uh, with Team Winnet. I think it will be very important days. The next two days are going to be uh, the key of the leg, I think. Well, I'm sure we're going to have less wind. So uh, we're going to hit the less wind first. So basically, if this is 15 miles, when we arrive in the channel, they will get closer because they will keep wind for longer and we go slower. And sure enough, Gurdian's prediction proved uncannily accurate. Our watch was uh, was really difficult because we sailed into the the area with less less pressure, so we lost uh, a couple of miles to Dongfang. With Team Brunel held up by light winds, the gap between the leading duo had closed, and they were now within sight of each other. It comes down to 24 hours of light wind floating around. Who gets the last gust that's going to win the race? It's tense. It's, uh, yeah, I'll be lying if it's not tense. We're excited because we have uh, Brunel uh, next to us down here. So we think we're doing very well. I think they had about there, we're probably a bit more nervous than we are. At, at least that's what I can feel on the surface. I think everyone is quite relaxed, even though it's a very uh, tense moment. It's, uh, it's a little bit all or nothing here. In the we're quite good at that. No? But I think it's, everyone is quite relaxed yes. today. It's a little bit strange sometimes. No? When we don't need, we put a lot of pressure. And when uh, maybe we could have some pressure, we, we are quite uh, OK. Till uh, 5,000 miles, we are 
crossing with uh, Brunel and uh, contact in five minutes. We want to go there, both of us. The idea is uh, you want to go there by the left or by the right. So the pressure is on, and both teams constantly change direction in a bid to gain even the smallest advantage. So there you can see, like five minutes ago, they will cross us, and the breeze is so much shifty and pressure difference. Now we're crossing them, but it looks quite easy. This might be the decisive tech. <laughs> On board Team Brunel, opinions differ as to the importance of rounding the Strait of Hormuz in first position. Well, on deck, you're looking at, you're looking at the clouds, you're looking at the wind you see on the water, look at the other boat, but on, and down below I've got all the, the weather information so I can see. Yeah, I think it will be really important to come first around the top over here, because it uh, looks like it's good pressure on the other side and uh, the guys first around uh, might actually stretch away. Is it true about the corner? What? Who is first at the corner wins the race? Oh, nah. Who told you that? I told you that. I told you that. But it's not just one another that teams have to worry about in the race to Abu Dhabi. That's a bloody big sailboat if they go over the top of you. That's just a wall of no wind. So he's been a nice guy and he goes to the wind of us. 100 miles behind, it's Team Alvi Medica and Mapfre that are competing for an improved fourth place to move up in the overall points table. So we are currently in the Gulf of Oman. Um, we're racing Abu Dhabi. We've got probably just under 400 miles left. Um, we're in a pretty tight battle with Mapfre, the Spanish team. They're just a couple miles to leeward of us and playing the shoreline. We're just slowly working our way up the Omani coast, uh, headed towards the Straits of Hormuz, and then uh, the last little bit in Abu Dhabi. The wind's been very light, very shifty. It's going to be uh, a lot of work um, for these last 400 miles and close racing, but um, we're looking forward to the finish. It's so nice, it's very nice to sail around and for us it's been a very good place because we were able to pass uh, Abimeca which there was 20 miles in the front and now they are 50 miles behind. So for us it has been a very tough night with a lot of uh, sail changes and say, uh, wind condition changes but we did, we did good, we pushed hard and now we are in the front, it's still 130 miles to, to arrive to Abu Dhabi. Uh, next move, uh, I can tell you, it will be in 15 minutes, attack. To avoid uh, the beautiful beach uh, of uh, Oman country. And, uh, I think there is one or two attack before the end of the, of the day. And after, uh, we're waiting uh, the backing of the wind to go on port uh, to the north and catch some uh, pressure uh, for tomorrow. Uh, slowly, uh, we make some gain uh, for the finishing line. So it looks like uh, a hand of a leg. It's uh, quite interesting, nice view. Alve Medica not so far, so there's some fight. So beautiful, uh, beautiful end of race. Uh, I feel uh, very uh, impressive by the, the huge. Uh, Landscape we can uh, see around us. And, uh, we are maybe at uh, 500 meters from uh, the rocks on the beach on the mountain. So it's uh, very dry and very, very nice. Further ahead of Team Alvi Medica and Mapfre, there's something fishy going on on board Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing as they're losing speed. No, it's not sand, it's still seven Justin Slattery is quickly dispatched overboard to take a look. A lobster pot is stuck beneath the boat, meaning it's time for muscle man Luke Parkinson to do the job. Big 
good job you weren't fighting for the lead. That would have broken your heart if you were leading. Yeah, that was one of the traps we laid for the opposition. It fell into our own trap. Further up the field, the battle for first has raged for several days between Team Brunel and Dongfeng race team. It's been tough going for both crews, but finally, it's the Dutch boat that has made a decisive move. So yeah, this morning we got past Dongfeng. We had a suddenly really nice breeze, and uh, we had to ride setup, and the boat was really fast. So we passed them, and now they're uh, 1.1 miles ahead. But uh, as before, everything can happen. It's, uh, it's only finished uh, once we're sailing over the finish line. So we should be uh, focused and, uh, and just uh, finish the job. Are you getting happy now? Oh, uh, it's uh, a couple of hundred meters to go. Yes, hopefully. Go on. Still not uh, cross the line, so we'll see. Let's wait uh, five minutes. For one member of the crew, victory is especially significant. First one. Nice. Nice, very nice. When I was 17, I got sick. I got a lymph cancer. So I quit sailing for two years. I learned in the past that life can be very short, so I'm going to live it every day as I, there's no tomorrow. Would you tell me two years ago I was winning a leg in the promotion race, I would have told you were crazy. It's always good to be in first place, uh, and especially uh, after this leg because it has been so close. So it's uh, it's, it's nice to, to have a win on the rubber belt, and uh, yeah, the guys did a fantastic job. Just 16 minutes later. Dongfeng race team sailed into Abu Dhabi to claim second place in the leg. A fine result, but it could so easily have been better. Last night was quite good, the last morning was terrible for us because uh, we were ahead and he came back uh, very quickly and passed us and uh, he was really fast and we couldn't do anything. We have been surprised by his speed and uh, yeah, for us, uh, we were thinking it was, we were in a good position to win the leg and uh, we lost in 10 minutes, we lost all, all we fight for, all the night we fight to have just a small advantage and we lost everything in 10 minutes, it was very difficult for us. But any disappointment is quickly forgotten when the sailors arrive on shore. This is, this is my mommy and my brother also here. This is my brother, uh, ah, big one and second one and small one. <laughs> How nice is it to see these guys here? Oh, um, I don't know how to say that, but I'm too exciting now. I don't know how to speed uh, my feeling. Uh, I think any team you will have asked in the captain, uh, you, will you sign for second place on this leg? Everybody would have said yes, but for sure we are disappointed because uh, when you lead the, the fleet uh, two hours, a few hours before the finish line, it's difficult to lose like that. But I think it's a very good second place in, in this leg. And, uh, and uh, for our team, it's a fantastic result for sure. Next week, the rest of the fleet finally arrive. It's time for the sailors to enjoy their family and some well-deserved time off. That.